Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss about bipolar junction transistors which is commonly known as BJT. So friends, let's get started. So friends, a bipolar junction transistor or known as BJT is a three terminal semiconductor device which can act as either conductor or insulator based on applied input signal. Due to this property, transistor can be used as switch in digital electronics or it can be used as amplifier in analog electronics. And a bipolar junction transistor is classified into two types, NPN transistor and PNP transistor. Operating principle of NPN and PNP transistors are same, but the construction and biasing arrangements are different. Also, we can see the symbolic representation of the transistor. The direction of arrow shows the direction of flow of current through the transistor. In case of NPN transistor, the current flows from collector to emitter terminal. And in case of PNP transistor, the current flows from emitter to collector terminal. Now, let's see the construction of NPN transistor. In case of NPN transistor, the emitter and collector is doped with n-type impurity and base is doped with p-type impurity. And on the other hand, in PNP transistor, the base is doped with n-type impurity and emitter and collector are doped with p-type impurities. And friends, depending upon biasing, the BJT can operate in three regions, active region, cutoff region and saturation region. In case of active region, the emitter base junction is forward biased and base collector junction is reverse biased. And to operate BJT in cutoff region, both emitter base junction and base collector junction should be in reverse biased. Now in case of saturation region, both the emitter base junction and base collector junctions are in forward biased. Whenever the BJT is used for amplification, then it is used in active region. And when it is used as a switch, then it is used in saturation and cutoff regions. Now let's discuss the working of an NPN transistor. The figure here shows an NPN transistor with majority and minority charge carriers. We can see that the emitter base junction is forward biased and base collector junction is reverse biased. And it is to be noted that an emitter region is heavily doped and base must be lightly doped and collector must be partially doped. And as we can see that as the emitter base junction is forward biased leads to thinner depletion region as compared to collector base junction. So when external force is applied on the transistor the majority charge carriers drift across the depletion region and is responsible for conduction. As the depletion region across emitter base junction is thin so the electrons gains enough energy from the applied external potential and moves towards the base region. Once the electrons entered into the base region, there are two paths for them. They can flow through the POS2 terminal on left side and other they can flow into the collector. As the width of the base region is very thin, most of the electrons will flow to the collector region. And only few electrons will combine with the holes present in the P region and rest move towards the collector region. This is because the reverse applied voltage at collector base junction provides a strong electrostatic field to the electrons. Also, after a certain period of time, the recombined holes and electrons at base region get separated and these electrons move further to the collector region. Thus, we can say that the overall emitter current is the result of base current and collector current. But the point here is that as we have already seen very few number of electrons will get combined with holes in P region. Therefore the base current in this case is very small. And the emitter current here will be approximately equal to the collector current. As we know that the direction of flow of current is opposite to the direction of flow of electrons and here in this case electrons are moving from emitter region to collector region. Therefore the direction of flow of current in case of NPN transistor moves from collector region to emitter region. So friends 
this is all about the construction and working of npn transistor well friends thank you for watching and please subscribe my channel for more videos